Chances are you got a security system for the alarm. Not only does the alarm let you and neighbors know that something's going on, it can also scare away an intruder. But none of us really want the alarm to be triggered. And most of the time, triggers are actually false alarms. So what really happens if you have a legit security system alarm that needs an emergency response? It's not as straightforward as you might think. In this video, we'll break down the different types of security system alarms that can be triggered and go into what happens after. But before we jump into the six, that's right, six types of security alarms, take a few seconds to like and subscribe to our channel. That way you won't miss out on any safety news, security tips, or product reviews that get posted right here at least twice a week. And if you wanna know which security system is best for you, check out our roundup of the best home security systems on safewise.com. To make it easy, we link to it in the description box below. Not all alarms are created equal. Depending on the type of security system, you could have as many as six different types of alarms, and they could each have their own unique response that happens when they go off. The biggest distinction among security system alarms is whether or not your system is professionally monitored. Professional monitoring means you've got someone watching your alarm system 24 seven. So if an alarm is triggered, a person at the monitoring center will start the response phone tree, so to speak. Self-monitoring means you're like Tigger. You're the only one. That means the only one watching out for alarms from your security system. Usually this involves an app with push notifications. And if an alarm is triggered, it's up to you to verify the emergency and call for help. For the purposes of this video, we're going to focus on alarms from professionally monitored security systems. If you're going to pick a synonym for security system alarms, the first thing that jumps to mind is usually burglar alarms. But a burglar alarm, what's technically an intrusion alarm, isn't the only cry for help your security system can send out. Intrusion alarms usually go off when a door or window is opened or tampered with, glass is broken, or a motion detector is triggered. This lets you know that someone is trying to get into your house. It's probably the scariest thing your security system watches for and likely the main reason you got a security system in the first place. But today's smart security systems can send out alarms for a bunch of other reasons. Depending on the type of system you've got, you could have panic alarms, duress alarms, SOS alarms, smoke alarms, and carbon monoxide alarms. We already talked about your basic burglar or intrusion alarm, but what makes these other types of alarms different? It basically comes down to two things, active versus passive alarms. The types of intrusion alarms I mentioned earlier are passive alarms. They are triggered by sensors that emit a signal when motion is detected, glass is broken, or an entryway is opened. Smoke and carbon monoxide alarms are also passive. If your security system hears one of these detectors go off, it automatically sends a signal to the monitoring center. You don't have to do anything to raise the alarm. Panic, SOS, and duress alarms, on the other hand, are active. These types of alarms are triggered manually by you or someone else in your home. You're the one sending the signal to the monitoring center, not a piece of equipment. Active alarms are usually taken more seriously by both monitoring centers and emergency responders. Passive alarms, on the other hand, are the cause of most false alarms. A sensor could fall, get bumped, or accidentally get set off when your college student sneaks home for the weekend to surprise you. False alarms are a big reason that there's so many different steps involved in responding to a triggered alarm. Whether it's you or a monitoring center that gets the initial alarm, a legitimate threat or emergency needs to be verified before you can call for help. In fact, many law enforcement agencies across the country won't respond to unverified residential alarms. One report claimed that 90% of all security alarms are false alarms. And a recent study found that over 40% of police departments in larger cities won't guarantee a response to residential security alarms at all. But most police departments will respond to a verified alarm. But what the heck does that mean? How do you verify an alarm? There are two main ways to verify a security system alarm. Visual confirmation, which could be video footage or a screen capture from your security camera that gets forwarded to the monitoring center or to law enforcement. And verbal confirmation. That means either the monitoring center confirmed with you over the phone that there's a real emergency, or you called for help yourself and talked to um, the dispatcher. 
Finally, it's the answer you've been waiting for. Your alarm is verified, now who's going to respond? With a monitored security system, the first response will almost always be from the monitoring center itself, regardless of the type of alarm. They are going to call you first to try to verify the alarm. If they can't reach you, they'll start in on your list of emergency contacts and you or your contacts will need to provide a secret code. It's usually a number or a word if you want to cancel the alarm. If that doesn't happen, police are usually the next call. The exception to this rule is a duress alarm. These are silent secret alarms that you trigger without sounding the siren on your system. Think of it like the buttons that you see bank tellers pushing in heist movies. Because this is a secret alarm designed for use in high stakes situations where you're under threat, literally in duress, the monitoring center will automatically call the police for help. There is no verification needed. Duress alarms aside, after the monitoring center establishes that you really need help, here's who they call. Police. Law enforcement is the most common agency called for a security system alarm, especially for traditional burglar alarms and duress alarms. They could also call the fire department. If it's a smoke or carbon monoxide alarm, the monitoring center will call the fire department for help. The fire department and paramedics could also be dispatched if it's a medical emergency and you've triggered an SOS or a panic alarm. Think of these types of alarms like a medical alert button. You know, I've fallen and I can't get up. With panic and SOS alarms, you are the one usually identifying the type of emergency that's happening. So you're gonna tell the monitoring center whether it's a fall, a fire, or someone breaking in. That way they can pick the right response to help you. And finally, they might call your emergency contacts. Some security systems let you disable police response altogether, even if you have professional monitoring. In this case, you'll provide a list of emergency contacts, usually family, neighbors, or friends. And then it will be up to your contacts to decide if they want to call an agency for help or try to come deliver help to you themselves. Here's a quick recap. These are the people you can expect to respond when your security alarm is triggered. The monitoring center, the police, the fire department, or your emergency contacts. Hopefully you'll never have to deal with a real security system alarm, but if you do, now you know what to expect. Before you go, give us a like and subscribe to our channel so you can stay safe and informed thanks to new helpful videos posted right here every single week.